a language arts uh, honors and AP language teacher. And uh, allow me to let uh, Kevin and Elaine introduce themselves. Hey, Jason. Thank you so much for having us. Um, like you said, I'm Kevin, Senior Product Manager for GoGuardian Teacher. I was previously a preschool teacher and then taught middle school after that. Then I was a director of curriculum and instruction for an after school program and uh, found my way to go guardian after that. So, um, you know, my heart is in education, worked in it my entire career. I'm happy to be here to help you guys. Hi, everyone. Um, my name is Elaine. I'm the associate product manager for Go Guardian Teacher. Um, I don't come from an education background per se, but I do come from a, a lot of uh, my family members work for the school district. Um, so definitely have a lot of experience there, but excited to be here and excited to hear your feedback on what we've been building. Thanks for having us, Jason. Uh, the, the gratitude is all mine toward both of you for being willing to be here. Um, let's take a look at the objective. We want to be able to utilize the GoGuardian functions of present to class and video conferencing. You may have noticed that the name seems to change from the when you maybe first signed up to now, and that's because options have been evolving and changing, uh, developing and making beta versions available to us. Um, and we'll get more into that beta. Uh, in just a moment. Hey, Jason, Jason, yeah. can I interrupt for a second? I'm so sorry to interrupt. This is Jen Rogers. Um, we had a presenter not show up. Do you mind if I go into that session and have people come and join your session? Sure. Um, yes, they may. Um, and they probably won't have as many um, options because I did create some Go Guardian classes for our attendees. And okay. I won't be able to go back in time and do that. But yeah, go ahead, invite them in. Just let them know right. they're going to have limited participation later. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Sure. So uh, I think that we'll we'll be successful with our time spent together if um, we can meet the following success criteria. I can access, present to class, and video conferencing. I can enable and disable conferencing and presentation features. I can customize with which students to present and or conference. If we can meet those criteria, I think that we've um, spent our time wisely. And if by the end of the workshop, you're still unable to do one of those things, I'll stick around uh, for, uh, you know, for as long as it takes to help answer questions and uh, make sure that you've met those success criteria as much as humanly possible that I can do from my end. So we're gonna start out um, by, uh, actually I ended up changing that one, introducing yourself to the chat bar, just because it got so large. We're at 77 right now, and I think we're gonna uh, skip that part and just get right to the overview. Um, but uh, we're gonna go to the overview, we're gonna do a description and demonstration, uh, and then there's going to be a, a question and answer time uh, with Kevin and Elaine, and we'll also uh, get some time to play with the features. And I uh, spent a lot of time this morning making sure that those of you that were already on the list and had joined us um, have a way to do that. Uh, hopefully, cross our fingers, right? And then um, we're going to uh, do one more mentee slide where we're going to check in to see where everybody's at, uh, and then a session survey. Um, Let's go ahead and uh, just, I'm going to give a, a quick introduction before Kevin and Elaine jump in here. Um, but what GoGuardian has done is they've really transformed themselves from a, uh, uh, an app that limits or restricts or observes what teachers, uh, what students are, are doing on their computers to really a full, fully functional um, pedagogical tool. And this is the exciting part because now if whether we're in an asynchronous environment or a synchronous environment, we have the ability now to present what is ever on our screen to our students screen. Um, and that's such a powerful thing. Um, if we were in a synchronous online distance learning um, situation, we could actually if our students are logged in, we can actually control what they're seeing 
on their um, on their screen, and it's compulsory. And that's kind of the exciting thing. It can be on the fly. If your students are logged in during your session, you have the ability for them to be at your meeting or for them to see your screen. Now, if we're outside of distance learning, we're in the classroom, we have the ability, instead of being glued to the smart board, and for those of you that have put small words on a smart board, realize that those students in the back have a hard time seeing it. Suddenly, every Chromebook in the classroom is a smart board. And um, that's a really powerful, tool to be able to use. And then, of course, the video conferencing. Um, what if you didn't have to wait for students to join your video conference? What if you could do it on the fly, in the moment? Like, oh yeah, I forgot to do this. And they're at all, all at home. And this is our, this is our, our class time where they were supposed to be working independently. I can pull them into that meeting uh, immediately. And those are powerful things. And at this point, what I want to do is I want to allow uh, Kevin and Elaine uh, to uh, present to you what they have found. And um, Kevin, I know that because you're outside of our, our district, are you able to uh, present your screen? I'm checking right now, Jason. Give me one second. Let me see. It looks like I should be able to take over as the main presenter. So I think I should be good to go. OK, great. I'm going to um, try to stop presenting mine then. And that should free you up now. All right, let me give it a shot. Um, let me go ahead and present my window. Um, it looks like I'm presenting. Is everybody good to see my screen? OK, great. So uh, here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to go ahead and hop into a GoGuardian teacher session. I'm going to go over the three main ways that you can kind of connect and communicate with your students. We have a voice only call, a video call, and like a lecture slash presentation mode. I'm going to walk through and describe each of those options. And then if there's any questions that come up along the way, please feel free to ask. Or we can save that for the Q&A, whatever you want to do, Jason, whatever you think makes more sense. Um, but I'll go ahead and, and walk through those three workflows. Let me go ahead and get logged in really quick. OK, so I'm sure as you guys are used to at this point and having used GoGuardian Teacher, the first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and hop into my class and start a GoGuardian Teacher session, which will allow me to see my students' screens. Here I have the three Weasleys. I have Ginny, George, and Fred. Um, and you have this new Call Students tab, which if you've been playing around with it before, may have said Present to Class before, but it now says Call Students because we've kind of expanded the options. And from here, you have, like I had mentioned, these three options. You have a voice-only call, a video call, and a lecture presentation. Um, I'm not entirely sure what your guys' district policies are, but the administrators do have the ability to restrict some of the features, which you can see here. Um, imagine that you want to disable students in a one-on-one -on -one situation from being able to use their webcam because you kind of want to maintain a little bit more privacy when it's a one-on-one -on -one call you can totally do that you can also restrict both the student and teacher from using their webcam in a one-on-one -on -one situation of course you can customize it for conference calls as well just depending on what your level of comfort is with teachers and students using their webcams while they're on a call uh, so you can check these policies at any point right here um, then the next thing I want to show you guys is we have, like I said, voice, video, and lecture. Uh, if you were to start a voice-only call, um, maybe this is in a situation where you're just starting the school year and the kids are a little uncomfortable with the teachers at this point because they're just getting to know each other and you don't have the ability to do like an icebreaker in class to get things started to get to know each other better. So in this case, you may hop on a voice-only call so there's no webcams and you guys are just talking. Um, but maybe as things progress or as the school year progresses and you guys are warming up to each other, uh, you can start a video call where the students can turn on their webcams on and off at will. I'm going to go ahead and start a video call to show you guys what this is like. Um, I'm not going to enable my microphone because I might get an echo, but I have the ability here before I start the call to turn on my camera and my microphone. And from here, I can select the students that I want to call. Before I start the call, if I want to you know, 
deliver instruction or teach a lesson. I can make sure that all the students are muted so the students aren't talk talking over each other. Um, but for now, I'm just going to select all and give my students a call. When I click this call button, a new tab will open up for the student that allows them to accept or decline the call. And just like Jason said, there's no need for a link in a calendar. The students need to access. You don't need to email them a link. Uh, it just pops open right up on their web browser. I am going to give um, one of our team members a second to join the call. Oh, here we go. We have George Weasley. Hello, George Weasley. <laughs> nice to have you. Um, so uh, now that George Weasley is on, is on the call, I have the ability to mute the student. Um, I can disable their webcam, too. Uh, if something inappropriate is going on in the background, like somebody, like a parent is walking around in the background, maybe like half naked or something, things happen in the house. Um, but like I said, you have the ability to mute um, and then disable their webcam. See here, when I mute them, it says that they were muted by the teacher. Of course, we, we can't give you the ability to unmute them because imagine that the student walked away from their computer, you unmuted them, and now they're having a sensitive conversation. You might be privy to information that they don't want you to have. So the best we can do is we can allow you to unmute them, at which point they can turn their microphone on and off at will again. I uh, kind of hope that makes sense. Um, the same is the case with the webcam. Um, I can disable it. Um, of course, I can allow it. And then that gives them the ability to turn their webcam back on when they're ready. Uh, the thing that really makes us special, though, I think, is you know, I feel like we, we've kind of given you the ability to reclaim the physical classroom experience and that you can click to view the student's screen. And then not only can you see what they're browsing, they happen to be on the call right now, um, but you can also see their webcam right here on the right, too. So you can see them, talk to them, coach them through a lesson, do whatever you need to do, but it's all in one place. I'm going to go ahead and go back to all the students. Um, also, in the event that I kind of want to present some lesson material, share some slides, I have the ability to share my screen, um, whatever Chrome tab I want. So any of these tabs I have here open, I can present my entire screen or a window. Those options are up to you, but kind of just like you might have in some of the other conferencing tools you've been used to using. At any point, if I need to like let's say I have a large class of 30, 40 students. If I need to see a quick view of who's currently on the call, maybe who hasn't attended the call or who's declined the call, I have access to that here. I can also see other teachers that are on the call. And I have access to these controls to say, mute all the students or mute individual students as well. Um, now I'm going to kind of show you how you can get a, a co-teacher on the call too. So uh, this is a way that you can test it while you don't have students like because I could imagine that some of you guys are not teaching right now, so you don't have students that you can test this with. So if you want to play around with this, you can just add a co-teacher to your classroom, take this link, send it to your co-teacher. I'm going to go ahead and send this to Elaine. Um, Elaine, could you go ahead and visit that link, please? I'm going to give Elaine just a second to join the call. Uh, while we wait, are there any questions so far about how the conferencing works, how interacting with the student works? Yeah, hey, Kevin. Thank you for stopping and asking questions. There are some questions that are showing up. These are can, these are new features, right? And so yeah. I think that taking um, our district in particular has not fully in, in adopted these yet, but I imagine they're on. Have you had any conversations with the IT department in the district, either you or Elaine? Or somebody else. So, in like the way that this is able, the way that we're able to turn this on for the district is someone at GoGuardian had to have spoken to district leadership or someone in IT to be okay. able to activate this. So it may not have been me; it may have been someone else from GoGuardian. But someone has talked to the to the district leadership to get this activated for you guys. Oh, so it is active in our yes. in our in our domain. All right, and, correct. Oh, great. Thank you very much for that. And then um, there is another um, This, to clarify, this works based upon the student's account, right? So they're in the subdomain student.salinasuhsd.org. It's not based on device, right? They could be on any device, but logged in. If they're logged into their Google account, that's when GoGuardian will have um, over, not oversight, but you know, they'll, they'll be able to interact with their teacher that way. Is that correct? Exactly. So. 
It's all based on their account. Um, and if they log into a Chrome browser, whether that's on a Windows machine or a MacBook or something else, as long as it has the Chrome browser, um, they oh, should be good to be logged in. Yeah, that's, that's important. As long, but if it's on Microsoft, we have the ability to install it directly on the computer. Mm -hmm. um, so if they have Windows, then, then it will work for Windows on whatever browser they're on. But uh, mm -hmm. for other devices, they have to just be logged into their Chrome account on a Chrome browser. Yeah, we're, we're on Chromebooks here. So that's going to that's gonna be what, you know, that's going to take precedence over everything. But some students, I imagine, there's a minority of students that will be logging in with other devices as well. But it's just good to know that if they're in Chrome, right, they need to, that, that's where they can uh, interact with their teacher via GoGuardian. Exactly, right. Thank you, Kevin. Yeah. And another thing I just want to add there is that, you know, this is the, first of all, it's the beta version that we're seeing right now. And it was just released to our district. The district has placed us in the, the most highly restrictive environment as far as video conferencing is concerned. Um, right now, we will not be able to see the students' uh, faces or, or their camera. Um, it will be audio only as for right now. But I do expect that will change as they begin reviewing their policies and preparing for the school year. So what you see right now is one beta and two, the most highly restrictive that it will be um, in, in our lessons as we, as we move forward. It will become less restrictive. Yes. Uh, yeah. Thank you for, for adding that context, Jason. Um, the next thing I can show you guys, Jason, I don't know if you want me to do this, is I can show the presentation feature, which is more of a one-way communication between the teacher to the students. Would you want me to do that? Yes, I'd like to do that. And there was a few people that came in a little bit later and had questions about the call feature and what, what that is. So if yeah. you want to address that first. Oh, of course. Yeah. Um, I can't see the questions. Is there any chance um, somebody could, could read them? That would be super helpful. Can you show again the types of calls not understanding this feature? OK. I'll go to the calls. Got it. So three types of calls. You have voice only, which means that you can call a group of students, or one student, or a subset of your class, whoever you want to call. And they'll be able to talk to you, and you'll be able to talk to them. Uh, and that's pretty much the extent of it. If you want to, you can also share your screen as a teacher during a voice-only call, but that's kind of what you're limited to. The students in a voice-only call would not be able to turn on their webcam. It would be an option, nor would the teacher be able to. Then for a video call, you can call one student, a group of students, or, some, or a subset of your, of your class or the whole class. You have flexibility there. But in a video call, the teacher and the students can turn their webcams on and off at will so that they show their faces um, if the district allows it. And they can turn on their, uh, their microphones on and off at will as well. Then the final uh, type of call that we have that we haven't gone over yet is lecture slash presentation. This is more of a one-way kind of communication, meaning that the teacher can present their screen, turn on their webcam and microphone to talk to the students, but the students can't turn on their microphone or webcam. So they can't like talk or participate uh, like they would be able to in the video or voice only call, because this is really more about delivering instruction and the teachers being able to talk, present their screen. Um, the students can chat in with the teacher if chat is turned on, um, but you can turn that off as well if you really just want the students focused on what the teacher is presenting. I hope that that clarifies things. If there's still some questions, I'm happy to answer what the different types of calls are like or what the different features are that you have access to while you're on those different types of calls. Great. Did you want to go ahead and uh, demonstrate the presentation mode? Yeah, I'm going to go ahead and end the call. Thank you, George and Elaine. OK. Yeah, I'll go ahead and demonstrate the uh, presentation as well. So. Like I said, this is more of a one-way conversation, or sorry, one-way kind of communication from the teacher to the students. When you start the presentation, you have the same options like you did with, uh, with the video call that you can turn on your camera and your microphone before you get started. The next two options that you have is you can present your screen, and, the, and then the final thing, which is really great, is you can lock the students to the presentation. So if you don't want them navigating to other websites while you're sharing your slides or while you're presenting, 
you can make sure that they're kind of stuck viewing that tab and that they're they're completely focused on what you're presenting. So uh, I can go ahead and check off all these options. Just like before, I can select the students that I want to present to. And then I have my option of choosing what I want to share. So if I want to share my feedback form that I would love to share with you guys at the end of, of this session to, to know how you guys feel about these features. But anyways, this is just to show that I'm presenting this tab to my students. And because I chose lock to presentation, they're unable to navigate to other websites. They have to see what I'm presenting in real time. Here, I'm going to go ahead and stop, uh, stop presenting. Um, you, if you decide not to lock the students to the presentation, they can't close that tab. So it will always be open for them, but they can navigate to other websites. So if you're, I don't know, doing a presentation on um, organic compounds and you want them to be able to look up some, I don't know, Wikipedia resources or some scientific resources and other tabs, but you do need them to always have access to your presentation, they can't close it, so they can always get back to it, um, but they are able to freely navigate to other tabs while you're presenting too. Uh, once again, I just want to open it up for questions. Is there anything, any clarifying questions? Any, uh, yeah. Yeah, there are a couple, Kevin. Thanks for stopping again. Yeah. So the um, one question is about, um, and it, I think it pertained to what you just said, and you might have responded to it, I think, in the presentation mode. Um, can you can you do as a group? Can you do the presentation as a group and individually? Or is, yeah. it, is it a whole group? Right. So when when you're deciding to present, like like so, you select the students to present to. So if yeah. you want to do the whole class, you can. But yeah. if you just want to do to George, you can just select George and present to George only. Okay. And I see that um, there was a question too about the login that students use, and I'm just going to say again. I think I think Kevin, and correct me if I'm wrong, that again, it, if the students are logged into Chrome with student.selenusuhsd.org, that's when they can interact with the teacher. If they log in, like let's say they're on another device, not a Chromebook, like a Windows PC or a Mac, they could still have another personal account open, right? And the only ones that would be interacting would be the Chrome. Is that a correct? Is that a correct statement? Exactly. So if they went on their personal MacBook and logged into a personal uh, Google account, we're not going to be able to include them in a session. Um, that kind of helps us from like a security standpoint, too. We don't want people that are outside of your organization like getting into calls. Um, and then, of course, like if you don't want to be monitoring like, you know, their personal devices, that's a way that we can make sure that that doesn't happen. But if they log into their school account on their MacBook or their Windows, they can yeah. still participate in these sessions. Yeah. And another question is another question is that how do if student if teachers want to practice with this in advance like I guess this feature is now available in Go Guardian once um, I, I get um, what they have the call students tab open now is there a way that you can you can invite like another teacher or another colleague right to check out the feature if you want you know to play with it a little bit it doesn't have to just be someone at student.selenusuhsd.org is that correct Kevin? As long as you've added the teacher to your classroom and they're a co-teacher in this classroom, here's my history of hip hop class. Um, I'll go ahead and show you who's in my class. Uh, see, I invited Elaine to the call. She's a co-teacher for my history of hip hop class. So I can send her to the link to the call and she can jump on the call. But if they're not uh, like a teacher on the call, then they can't join, or they're not a teacher in the classroom, then they can't join. But I guess my question is, can you add a like a colleague? Like, if you're with your 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 group, like your your colleagues in your same content area, can you involve them in testing this out, these processes out? Yeah. Uh, can, can I enroll you as a student if you were one of my colleagues in my class? So you would need to add them as a student, um, okay. and you could do that. That's all. That's all the question is. The, there's it's a little tricky because. For this to work, the student has to have the extension. Um, teachers don't have extensions, and you would need to install that on the device. Um, oh, I see. It would be more complicated. Um, we don't really, we don't have a great way right now of simulating like quote unquote fake students. Um, so, if you wanted to have a teacher like kind of masquerade as a student, um, 
you'd have to install the extension on their on their machine, which I mean, you'd have to get IT involved in that. Okay, very good. Thank you very much. I'll, I'll continue to look at the. I'll continue to curate as many questions as I can. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Since this question has come up, I think, from multiple uh, places here. Um, I did create kind of a way for for those that were signed up for this uh, workshop to play around with these features. And what I did is I created four uh, separate classes, and I made each of the participants in this workshop co-teachers with me. And if you log into GoGuardian, if you were already signed up for it before today, you'll see that um, you've been added to class demo one, demo two, demo three, or demo four. And you're co-teaching that class with 15 other teachers. So you can go and play with those features. Just um, maybe even if you just decide to hit present, present just briefly. And I did uh, build in, I baked in some, uh, some play time for you to do that. Um, and so uh, when Kevin is done with the Q&A here, we'll let people play around a little bit and then come back and ask questions about their experience. Wonderful. Um, I, I think unless there's more questions, I think there's one thing I want to, there's one more thing I wanted to go over. But if there's other questions, I'll get to those first. I, I, uh... I lost track of the question. I mean, there's a lot of questions coming in, Jason. If you, you're, I see you're monitoring it too. I just logged into GoGuardian. So if you see some more questions, Jason, that you want to address right now, um, feel free to do that or Kevin, just continue. And, and again, I'll go back and I'll look in the chat and see if I can find some others that we need to respond to at a later time. Sure. Can students chat with us during presentations? Yes, you can enable chat. Uh, and so if you're looking at uh, this button right there, um, you're, you can enable the chat and they can chat and ask questions even if you're in presentation. And in fact, this is the only, the presentation mode uh, I got the opportunity to play with during summer school this year. And that worked really well where students were able to ask questions and I would just read them aloud much like what we're doing here. I had a question about uh, whether students could um, uh, create a virtual background um, to make it safer for them to show their faces during um, calls? Right. Right now, we don't have the ability to add a virtual background. We just give the student the ability to turn the webcam on and off whenever they want, and then give the teacher the ability to disable the webcam if something inappropriate is going on. But at this point, we don't have the ability to add a virtual background. Hi. Can the students listen to their peers here or not? Oh, sorry. Can you can you ask that one more time? Can, can the students present to their peers, to their classmates? Right. So at this moment, they can't. That's something that we're investigating. And also, as these questions come up, I have a like a tiny little two question survey I would love to give you guys, where we list out some of these features that we don't have, but we want to know: Hey, is this something we need to build by back to school or like end of August to help you guys? And so features like that, like making the student the presenter. Not something that we have right now, something we're looking into. And if that's something that's really important to you guys, it's something we can build. Thank you. Kevin, the question was, how many students are you able to see simultaneously when you're in the conferencing mode? Right now, um, you see eight students at a time. There's a couple reasons why we're doing this. Um, one is that with Chromebooks, it's really difficult and like demanding on the computer to have many webcam streams going at the same time. This is even the case for Meet and Zoom. Um, so we have to be careful if there's like older Chromebooks or Chromebooks that can't handle that. It's something we're playing around with in beta though. We're playing around with like showing eight or 12 or nine. Um, so it's not something we're like completely settled on, but right now it's eight. So what if we uh, give people a chance to open up their GoGuardian account, open the demo account that I created for them, and uh, play with it for a minute or two, and then we can just stick around um, to answer a little Q&A after about five minutes of play. Would that sound good, Kevin? Yeah, that sounds great. Okay. So if you have a GoGuardian account, go ahead now and um, and take a look at it, enter the demo account, 
and play with the functions. I just ask that if you do present, please don't present more than a few seconds. Uh, and that's just so that others in your group that I placed you in have the opportunity to play with their controls as well. So what you're going to be doing, um, I'm going to go ahead and go to present mode to, to demonstrate. Present my screen. Jason, why would we use GoGuardian um, to present instead of, say, Google Meets? It's compulsory. Okay. They're, and they're there. Okay. Uh, and I would say this goes actually beyond just distance learning. This goes into the classroom where you can start doing some powerful things with your students by, by making sure that they see what you want them to see while they're in class with you and you're not glued to the smart board. We've gotten really good with using smart boards. And now it's about, it's about making our Chromebook smart too, making, making that the smart board that we're using. And these are all just tools that um, every time they add a new tool like this, it becomes, uh, it becomes pretty exciting to tell you the truth that you can, that you can begin to present these things. Um, let me go ahead and show you. So I'm in the basically the landing page, the home page for classrooms. Um, so if you're on the GoGuardian account on the left side, click classrooms. And if you signed up for this before, you're going to see either demo one, demo two, demo three, or demo four. I'm going to open this one up. When you open that up, what you can do is um, you can actually uh, start a live session. You all can can start the session because you you guys are all co-teachers with me. I'm going to click go to session here. And when you go to that session, you will see the call to students tab. And here's where you can begin um, opening these options up, taking a look. If you do choose to present, uh, again, keep it for a short, very short presentation time to give everyone a chance to exercise that control. And um, we'll just be here and I'll say in five minutes, we'll, um, we'll continue with the Q&A and then um, we'll uh, do the wrap up activities. Are we able to be in Google Meet while we're doing um, the GoGuardian video? I'm wondering about our, our cameras. I was able to do that this summer okay. and because I wanted to test just for this presentation and okay. it was possible for me and I, I hope it's possible for you. And if not, you can, you know, you can leave this meeting and just, you know, meet back up here in five minutes if, if you can't make it happen on your device. Okay. So starting, sorry, just to clarify. So starting this year, we will not be using uh, Google Meet. We're going to be using GoGuardian for presenting. You you will have a choice to use whatever whatever whichever platform you like. This is just another opportunity for you. Oh, okay. I thought you were saying that this was required then. No. Okay. Thank you. My question is for uh, Kevin or Jason. I'm, I'm just curious about in the presentation mode, why there wouldn't be um, a tool for the presenter to be able to mute the students so that we could have more interaction. I work with language learners. And so I need a lot of stopping and checking for comprehension. Sorry, let me, let me make sure I understand that correctly. So mm -hmm. you need the ability to mute students while you're presenting? Yes, I mean, why why the present presentation mode in GoGuardian is not more interactive? Um, in other, for example, like in um, Google Meet, we can mute the students uh, if we don't want them to be talking while we're presenting. Um, I just was curious why that feature isn't added to this presentation yeah. mode. So just to be clear, you to you absolutely can present your screen or share your screen with your students and allow mm -hmm. them to chat, or you can mute them and unmute them. Um, so you can do that. You just do that in a video call. Um, and it'll be just like you what you're wanting. Uh, the thing with the lecture presentation mode, we made it one way just in case you don't want students like turning off their webcam turning on their webcams on and off or their, their microphone on and off and like potentially being a distraction. But if you want to do a video call and you want to share your screen and allow your students to talk, you totally can. 
Great, thank you. I have a question that I don't know will be relevant. I hope is for other people too. I'm gonna wanna do demos on paper. I'm a art teacher and we're gonna need to show skills. So if I have my phone position, can I use my phone to use GoGuardian and show my desk versus my computer screen sometimes? That is really interesting. So you're saying you would be doing your presentation, like you'd be using the camera from your phone to show what's going on on your desk. To do a live demo and paint with them. Right. I don't think that we support the ability to present from your phone at this point. You'd, you'd have to angle the, the camera from your, your, um, your laptop or your computer onto your desk, and that's probably the only way to do it at this point. So we wouldn't be able to do like a presentation from the phone, at least at this point. Rob Appel, do you think I can get a hold of one of those new dock cams? You no, know, I, I no longer have my my hands in that pot. So. <laughs> so. I'll, I'll, I'll go through your site. Really. I'll go through your site. Go through your site. Um, my site allowed me to take my dock cam home uh, to try it out this summer, but I wasn't able to connect it. Rob was saying the new ones have a different kind of connection port. That's all I'm going to say. I'm going to leave it alone. Sorry. No, no problem. No problem. Yeah, that's true. So um, those are coming, and they're cheaper, too, than the older ones, and they present right in Chrome. Um, so those would work, I think. So Kevin, one of the questions was um, the option of recording your session to share later, and I know on one of the beta versions you showed me, you were toying with that possibility? Yes. So as of August 3rd, it's not in the, the beta that you guys have access to now. You'll be able to record video calls, voice calls, presentations, and then share them with students afterwards. So you'll get a shareable link that you can send to your students, and then they can click that link to watch the video or listen to the voice call or watch the presentation. And only the students in that class will actually be able to view the video. Um, it'll be restricted by class. So other students from other classes won't be able to go into that link and watch the video or people outside of your organization. So we'll give just a just a couple more minutes for people to stop playing. Just to go guarding. You probably have more questions as you start to use it. Lisa's asking, I clicked on the present screen but only see my face what do i do clicked on the present screen but you're only seeing your face so you're you're seeing your webcam but you're not seeing your presentation is that the is that the idea yeah um you won't you won't be able to see what you're presenting um because the computer is just going to is going to display the page that you're currently on, but all of your students should be see should see what you're presenting. I don't know if I'm answering that right, so apologies if that's it's kind of not the answer you were looking for. She's probably not seeing. She's only seeing her face because although there is a student enrolled in her class, a test student enrolled in her class, um, they're not on there. So they're you know, it's a fictitious student. So. You're not gonna. You're not gonna see any any movement except for for your own. So we won't be able to see the page that we are showing the students. Um, we'll see it on our own monitor. That's what we'll see it on. Exactly right. So whatever page that you're you're looking at whatever website you're on, you'll see it on your computer 
And then if you go back to the screen where you can see the student screens, you'll see that they're seeing that as well. So we really want to split our screens. Like we want to have a split screen function. Uh, there is a way that you can do that. So the best way to do that would be to have two separate windows open. Um, like let's say you want to see your students and your presentation at the same time, right? And maybe that's kind of what you want, you're trying to do. Um, what you do is you have two separate separate windows open, one for viewing your students and the other one for what you're going to be presenting. And when you choose the screen to present, just choose select the window with your presentation open. And then that will allow you to have two browsers open at half width. So one's you're going to be your students, the other one's going to be your presentation, and you can see your students and what you're presenting at the same time. I hope that makes sense. OK. Um, so perhaps what I'll do now is if there's still more questions about uh, accessibility or how to access the functions, we'll come back to those. Uh, but I do want to give us enough time to, uh, to finish up as well uh, for, for everyone. Um, so if we don't mind, I'm going to go ahead and uh, go back to um, presenting my screen here. And... My Chromebook's being a little bit slow. Um, I wanna share with you a, a how-to guide uh, that the team, no, I didn't create this. Uh, Elaine and Kevin are responsible for this. Uh, there's just a link to it here. And I'm just gonna briefly uh, show everyone where this is. It's, it's like drinking water from a fire hose sometimes with all the information that we're getting at once. So this how-to guide goes through what Kevin uh, just did. And uh, again, it's just linked to, uh, it's a hyperlinked on that page. So you can access it right now, even if you would like. And it basically goes through the whole idea behind what a call is and uh, the different calling features. Uh, it has some, a uh, lot of linked videos uh, and how-to materials uh, here on slide three. Uh, it actually takes some screenshots of uh, each step, it goes through step-by-step -step guide of how to use each function. So if there's any questions about that, you can, you're always um, welcome to, to access it here. So, you know, for a voice-only call, step one, step two, step three. Uh, and it does that for each of the three features that you can enable, that you can access here. Uh, so it begins the video call. So I just want to make sure that everyone's aware of that resource and it's there for you. Um, I also uh, provided a link of me using the present to class um, function with a, a live class during summer school. And I didn't really teach them anything while we were doing this. I just told them that I would be demonstrating the use of it. So if you want to see what that earlier beta version looked like and, and how it was used. Uh, I have that resource for you as well. Um, we've been kind of already doing the Q&A, um, but uh, the, the next and, and the play time. Uh, but I know that Kevin had some um, feedback that he was going to ask for uh, for you from you. Um, and also, uh, we're when we're done with that, um, we're going to go back to menti.com. Don't go there yet. Uh, but we're going to go there uh, just to find out um, where we were and if we met our goals today. Uh, and then there's a session evaluation to finish up. So let me um, come back here. Uh, last last moments of the Q&A before we go to the feedback for Kevin and his team. Uh, Jason, I had a question. Um, I was trying to set up like a demo class like you did, and I added all my PLC members as teachers but it won't let me start a session unless there's a student. So how do I add a sample student? What I did is um, I pestered Rob Appel until he gave me fake student accounts. Um, but I'm not sure he wants me to give those 
a way. Let's ask Rob um, if everyone can have fake student accounts or if, um, if that's a closely guarded secret. So right now, since I'm not in that office, I don't have access to those like I used to. So that's the short answer to that. Um, that's something though that I, I can see the utility of that and that's something we might, we, we might want to ask about, getting something like that to test this out. I would say overall, like with this kind of stuff, there's going to be a lot of, you know, trial and error, especially with students up front, you know, for all of us, you know, with all the, a lot of the things that we're learning here. I know that, that that's something that I'm going to bake into my, uh, to my norms at the beginning of the year about being flexible as we navigate this new reality of distance learning, prepared distance learning this time. But in any case, um, I will submit an email on behalf of that question because that's something that I'm interested in as well. And uh, another, I, I know Jen Rogers was, was on this call with us and I'm not sure if she's still there. Um, but also uh, a student asked, is there, I mean, uh, sorry, a participant asked, is there a way to change the students that you're viewing on your screen? And so uh, this would be for Kevin. You said we have eight. Um, can we cycle through those eight to get to a new set of eight or are we stuck with looking at the first eight through the entirety? Yeah, you can cycle through them. You just click a button really quickly and you go from page to page and it shows different students. And uh, one other thing is that the students that are speaking will like dynamically appear on the first page. So that might be helpful too in seeing the students that you need to see. But if you want to just monitor different students, yeah, you can cycle through your different groups of students. Okay. And I think if there's any more um, questions, we can stick around after. But um, Kevin, if you want to get your feedback and then we'll um, uh, we'll do the the exit survey as well for for um, for the tech department. Yeah, thank you so much, Jason. Yeah, I just want to send out this like very, very short survey on just from what you saw, how satisfied you guys are with what the experience is, what, what it looks like and how it behaves so far. I know you guys didn't have too much time to play with it, just but just generally speaking. And then I have a list of like things we don't have yet, and I want to know what's most important to you guys. So there's just a series of checkboxes, and if you could just select the two features that if you needed them by end of August, what would be the most essential additions to what we have now? So I'm going to go ahead and, and send a little link. Um, give me one second. I'll send it in the chat. But if you guys could fill this out, it would really mean the world to me, honestly. Like, we built this pretty quickly. And we know there's some things missing. And we want to jump on them as soon as possible. But we just need to know what's most important to you guys. Kevin, did you send us the edit? Could you, I think, um, could you send us the published version of the form? I think you sent us the the, the one that's for editing. Ah, uh, okay. Give me one second. Editing. Is yes. it saying that you're unable to access it? Yes. Okay. Okay, sorry about that. Um, it should be working now. Let me know if it isn't. And then as you finish up uh, with Kevin's uh, quick survey, if you will um, go to Menti and put in 45217, 
Uh, and then just go ahead and answer the, that really quick question there um, that we see, and then go to uh, the next slide as you have it open. Click on Thursday session and do the session evaluation uh, right there. I would appreciate it. Uh, that would be very super helpful. Uh, so two, th two last things, uh, menti.com, just for me to know if we met our success criteria uh, and the session evaluation. If we did not meet the su success criteria um, with you and you want to stay online uh, and for further questions, um, I'll be here uh, to help make sure. Uh, and there's my contact information too as well on the slide deck. So if you would do those two things after, after Kevin's. And I want to thank everyone for participating. We had a lot of people here. We, at, at one point, our, our peak was 138 in this single session. So uh, thank you for everyone. And, and if we didn't get to your question or somehow it was overlooked, please let us know now and, and we'll, we'll try to help you out. Uh, Barry Covington is asking, would we be able to see more students on a grid screen if we were using desktop computers opposed to our limited Chromebooks? That's something we're playing around with, is that if you're on a more powerful device that can show, say, a lot of webcams at once without slowing the computer down, then we can kind of like dynamically figure that out and allow you to show more screens at once. We're starting at like the base of like, okay, what could like a low performing device computer show at one time. And so we're starting with eight. But we're, we're thinking about making more available in like a grid view if your computer is capable of handling it. Uh, this is more a question for Rob. How can we get a hold of the recording of the teacher tech sessions that have been conducted? I know Brianna was speaking to that about making those available. Do you know where that's going to be available? You know, I think those are going to be available on the uh, the YouTube channel for for the ed techs. I'm not sure though yet, but those will be available. And so I saw Jose's question; that's a good one. And I think that's they'll be made they'll be made available in some way, shape, or form. I'm confident of that. Um, Jason, I have another question for the kind of demo class. Yeah, go for it. Um, so I was able to get a student um, in there. So if I just want to call the teachers, is there a way to do that? Or I have to include the student? You, you only want to talk to the co-teachers? Yeah, just because this is a real, a real student that another teacher in the session gave me. So he doesn't need to be part of it, but I'd still want my PLC to be able to see what this looks like. Right. There's no way to do it without calling the student and then selecting teachers. You can select whoever you want to be a part of the, the video call. Okay, I, when I'm clicking select students, I'm just seeing the student. I'm not seeing the teachers. Mm. So where, how do you add the teachers? Is Kevin still on? Yes, I am. So is the question about how to add teachers to a classroom? I've added them to my classroom, but I don't yeah. see them when I'm trying to start a call. Right. So you don't, the way that you invite teachers to the call is you just share the link with them. So you copy the URL from the call, send it to them, and then they can join in on the call. Yeah. 
Someone was asking, uh, Lynn was asking the link to the evaluation. Click on the second to last slide and you'll see session evaluation. If you click on that, that's a hyperlink, cleverly hidden. Is there anyone that typed in a question that we missed somehow? Can you post the link to the Google Slides again? Because I, I didn't get it and I don't see it in the... Um, in yeah. The, um, the fastest way for me to do that is... Um, so the, the link to the Google Slide is at bit.ly gg hyphen screencast. Thank you, Rob. Uh, Kevin, are you? Oh, sorry. Uh, Kevin, are you still on? Yes. Uh, where is the link? Like, so I did start a call. I don't know where the link is. Um, it so as soon as you clicked start call, a new mm -hmm. tab should have popped open, and then uh, you'll go ahead and just copy that URL for that tab that popped open, and you can share that with other teachers. Okay. It seems like all the presentations I've seen, the hyperlinks don't work. Is that right in the like in the presentation itself when we're watching it on whether it's through GoGuardian or Google Meets or whatever? I think this is for Rob, maybe. What was that, Mia? Well, when I um like anytime we're trying to like use a link that's already embedded in a presentation um, that's being presented, whether it's through GoGuardian or whether it's through Google Meet, I haven't been able to use those hyperlinks. Is, is that true? Like it has to be in the like slideshow presentation in a different window? Yeah, that's so been... you're presenting to kids, right? So you wanna drop those links into the chat, just like you see, is that what you're asking about? Drop them into the chat? Yeah and put a www in front of them so that it becomes a hyperlink. But I mean, you're retyping it, right? You're not able to actually click on a link in like on the page you're seeing right now, right? Well, if you're on a pre if you're in present mode, no, but if you have that presentation open like in an alternative location, you know what I mean? So you have another window with that presentation and then you copy and paste that link and then you put it in. That will work. But you know, we use a lot of bitlies in the district, so Whenever you do that with Bitly, at least in Google Meet, you need to append the, not append it, you need to pro, like put it in front, like www.bitly forward slash whatever, just so it becomes a hyperlink and it makes it easier for students and whoever is participating to be able to get to where they need to go. I'm just asking as a teacher, like if I had students looking at my presentation, I don't think they can actually click the hyperlinks that I've created they when cannot. I'm presenting it, That's right? right. Right, you'd be sharing the slide deck with them like I shared with you guys. Mm -hmm. Carol uh, asked a question, what is the recommended, uh, what is recommended for use to monitor student integrity as they take assessments at home? So uh, how can GoGuardian be used to monitor uh, and test assessment integrity? I don't have the fast answer to that. Rob, you look like you had an idea. Yeah, so the, you know, I think that is a, that's a, 
challenge moving forward and um you know i think it's a it's an opportunity too i think because i think we the way we think about assessment has to change you know like so i'm thinking a lot about projects i know this isn't an easy answer right especially if we a lot of us like myself included have lots of multiple choice and selected response type of assessments and i think in this environment that we're in now because uh we we can't monitor the integrity of those assessments especially if they're content based we need to think rethink how we're doing that and i know carol from i've worked with carol for for a lot of years and i know right now she's teaching using plato and i don't know if, if the plato folks have what how they're thinking about this right now but i know in that i think what she's referring to in that environment and carol feel free to unmute yourself but i think what she's referring to in that environment there's lots of select response types of items and right students can like even if they're in go guardian and it's you know it's controlled in that respect and the teacher can see it they can still be on their phone or they could be on another device right and they could still be looking up answers and i think that's what carol's question lends itself to rob you're correct yeah that was my concern and that is what students can do yeah. uh, I'm not saying they are doing it, but it is definitely a concern. And the Admentum software or the Admentum company um, hadn't had a solution yet. Yeah, 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 yeah. So yeah, Carol, I understand the predic that predicament for sure. And I just think it's like for me again. I'm thinking a lot about projects and those kinds of assessments and getting out and, and moving away from selective response. Still doing selective response for like quick formative checks, but for summative things, more along the lines of essays and videos and, and that kind of thing. Mm -hmm. Thank you. And even the essays and things like that are easier to, um, to plagiarize now because students have these apps that will take something that they wish to plagiarize and will rewrite it for them. It'll paraphrase, they're kind of paraphrasing apps. Um, and so, on one level, when we read it, we know when it's been paraphrased, it's a pretty easy, it's a pretty easy spot. But as long as they have a, a second device, they can look up any answer and it really challenges us. Uh, you know, I teach language arts and it really challenges us to make sure that our, the questions that we ask, um, we expect them to find information, but in the language arts classroom, if I'm asking a question that's at the base level of just rote knowledge, then if I'm really addressing my standards, I have to make sure that I'm asking a question where I expect them to access their notes, access their devices, access everything on the internet that could help them because it's not going to help them answer the question. It's going to make them think critically about, about something deeper where they're not going to find the answer easily except through analyzing their own notes and, and their own information that is available to them. And, and this is Carol still, um, are the security features um, you still going to be available on GoGuardian, like the timelines and the reports? Sorry, I don't know if this is a question for myself or for Jason. I, it could be for Jason or for Kevin or uh, Eleno. Yeah, so all of the features that you have with GoGuardian Teacher, like seeing the timeline and the student reports, those will all still be available. We're not we're not taking those away unless for some reason the district needed us to prevent you, teachers from accessing that for some reason. Like those would all be available still. And and have these three call opportunities um, prompted any additional security measures? Um, I think the security measures really come into play with recording. Um, that's so something we built into the recording process is the student will be asked for consent prior to joining the call. And so if they say, I don't want to be recorded, um, they still join the call can hear the presentation, hear their fellow students, but their webcam and microphone will be deactivated for that call. Um, that's one security or privacy measure we've taken to like make sure that things that aren't recorded that shouldn't be. Um, that, that's kind of my best answer for like security or privacy kinds of questions related to the calls. I don't know if they're, if you're interested or curious about other things too. Thank you. I'll, uh, I'll have to experiment with it. So I, I've been using GoGuardian um, to monitor my student activity and then last quarter to 
do some assessing and, and that kind of thing, um, monitoring using GoGuardian. Um, I, I need to experiment more with these new features and then maybe I'll have some questions in the future. Thank you. And Alex was asking in present mode, it is basically like an instant live video of your screen. Yes, your, your screen or an app uh, or a tab, your choice. Unless there's sorry. been changes made. I'm sorry. Um, are we able to, it, when we're doing the calls, uh, either of those versions of calls, are we able to see their screens as well? Are we able to go back and forth or no? Yeah, you should be able to view their screens um, in both of those modes. So you just hover over the student's name and the option of view screen will pop up. You click it and then you can see their screen. That's and if you're really presenting cool. your screen, you can still view their screens and they're going to see what you see. So what I found the best practice using it this summer is the two device rule. In fact, even right now I'm on two devices because you'll see I'm looking off in the distance, right? It's because I'm, you know, I'm, I have one device set up and then I've got a secondary device um, just so sometimes I can, I can look at things that I don't want to present if I'm presenting my entire screen. Sorry, can you explain that a little more, please, Jason? So I'm logged in on GoGuardian on two devices right now because I'm presenting what you see right here. So you'll see my cursor moving around. I'm presenting that screen to you. But if I wanted to switch over and look at, um, if I was on GoGuardian using this and I wanted to look at what's on individual student screens, I might not, I wanna might continue presenting on my present mode, but having a secondary device allows me to access everything on GoGuardian in other tabs and other features that I'm not presenting. So having two Chromebooks or two devices is what I've found the best practice for me to give me that versatility that you're looking for. Jason, could that also be accomplished with two windows? Like if you had two windows on the same screen, I mean, is that is there any difference in, the, in, in that functionality other than your real estate on your monitor, right? I haven't tried it. Kevin, can you, can you log in on two different tabs in GoGuardian? Yeah, you could, well, you could just have, yeah, two separate windows open, one for teacher.goguardian.com where you see the students and then another one for the call and just have them be at 50% width and you should be good with the presentation to see the students and present. So that, that should work. Uh, but like, like you said, the screen real estate may be the problem. Um, you know, the windows might be kind of a little small depending on how big your computer is. I see there's still 26 people still interested in this topic. <laughs> if, if you have questions, go ahead and ask, or if you're just like hanging out to learn more, that's fine too. Um, how I'm, I'm here as long as you want me to be. Rob, you're going to set up monitors for everybody? <laughs> I'm going to be like the help desk support. Yeah, that's exactly right. That's exactly right. Yeah. You know, Maggie was the teacher of the year. And you guys are all awesome, right? But for sure, I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to pick her brain though too because she's going to be providing me with some project-based learning um, guidance. So um, yes, so that's, an, that's a yes. <laughs> Um, thank you, everybody. I've actually got to check in with my kids. And uh, it's thank you, Jason, for giving this presentation. Thank you to Kevin and Elaine, too. This is, uh, I think these are much, these are great additions to GoGuardian. And I can see it getting better over time, too. And um, it's great to see everybody else. And I hope you all have a great lunch. Take care. Thanks, Rob, for your help. I really appreciate it. I'm going to stop the recording now, Jason. It's been going for quite some time. I guess I should have stopped it before. <laughs> gone on way too long it's gone on, yeah well thank you for your extra time right thank you to you for providing all this extra time